and we're live now there we go we're live hey everybody welcome to the meeting of catholic this is luis medina on tuesday tuesday of reconquista on meeting of catholics a pleasure to be here with y'all it's a little late i know so i uh, apologize you know it's been a busy day and we're fixing to get some interesting weather apparently tomorrow here in north texas but anyway, nevertheless, here we are, uh, ready to do one more edition of Spanish contributions, you know, in America. And how especially can we learn from those lessons and apply in our lives? Or how can those lessons enrich our lives? Thank you all. Um, starting to see that some of y'all starting joining the live chat. Thank you. Please feel welcome to leave your comments, have your questions. We're going to interact with all of y'all. As the show progresses, I'm very excited to be here as usual. This is one of my favorite times so we can share all things that we can relate and have in common and just have a good time overall. Yes, including some trolls sometimes that we have there. Uh, before I forget, I want to thank all the supporters of the channel. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe and share if you haven't done so. And also, a special mention, as some of you all know, I have my own channel in Spanish called Reconquista Network. We're uh, right now very booked and busy uh, with a lot of interviews and content in Spanish. So those of you who speak Spanish, check it out. We have some interviews lined up that are going to be really interesting. Actually, tomorrow, which right now is Tuesday, we're airing Tuesday night, at least here in Central Time. So um, tomorrow, Wednesday night, we're going to have a guest that he is going to talk to us about the union between the Celts, the Irish people in particular, with the Hispanic world in general. And uh, he has some really interesting connections. I'm trying to, he plays the, the bagpipes also. He's a Mexican guy. I'm trying to convince him to play a little bit for us uh, during this live interview. It's going to be tomorrow, 7 Central, for those of you who speak Spanish. Uh, I'll see you over my channel, Reconquista Network. One more announcement, and we'll go to uh, straight to the topics. Um, before I forget, check out my little cup. I don't know if I ever mentioned that to you. And also have a little hat. I'll show it to you later. Anyway, um, oh, something, fell, eh, whatever. What else? Oh, yeah. Um, Patreon. We have a Patreon here at Meeting with Catholic. Please join us and support us. And also have a Patreon in Reconquista Network. That's how you can find us, Reconquista Network. And the reason I mention this is not just that I'm not trying to do a plug-in or anything. It's actually uh, mentioning because I'm uploading content exclusively for patrons, just little videos, 10, 15 minutes, kind of like reels or stories. Uh, Patreon apparently has that feature. So I've been having a lot of fun with it. Every week I'm uploading stuff. Uh, so, so if you want to check that out, join us in the Patreon community. Just little bits and pieces of Spanish history or whatever I find in the streets. Uh, maybe updates or, you know, give you a little preview content of what's going on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, that's it for the announcements. Thank you very much. Especially, please don't forget to add us in your prayers and your rosaries. Uh, it's crucial right now that you help us with your prayers. That's actually the most important kind of support you can give us. Okay. Uh, so we'll see. Anyway, so today I want to talk about something very special. As uh, you know, there's a unity between Hispanics uh, or the Hispanic population and here in the U.S., and it's just getting stronger, that bond, and there's a lot of bridges that we should be embracing and crossing. One of those, for example, we have obviously this large population here in the south of the United States. Well, in general, the whole country. We also have a territory called Puerto Rico. And uh, it's actually about the 500th uh, anniversary of the founding of San Juan, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, however you want to call it. So we're going to take the moment to talk about this guy named Juan Ponce de Leon. And this is a very interesting story, but I'm going to give you the context first, the geographical context. There it is on your screen. So you have the Caribbean right now, right there, as you can see in the map. When Christopher Columbus obviously discovers America, the new world, and I know some of you think that term is controversial, please just bear with me for the sake of the conversation. Um, Christopher Columbus discovered the new world and brings that report back to Spain to the kings in Barcelona in the court. Um, there's a lot of fanfare, right? And uh, obviously he didn't know at the time he discovered a new continent. So he just realized, hey, this is, you know, a bunch of islands before Asia. Well, for the second voyage, a lot of people were now very interested. 
here is where Ponce de Leon comes into the picture. Ponce de Leon was born. There's a little controversy. We don't know exactly when he was born, uh, but he was roughly born about 19 years before Christopher Columbus makes his first sale. Well, here comes the second, you know, sale to Columbus did four total four sales to the new world. This is the second one. Now, a lot of people are very excited about it. They're lining up in Ponce de Leon comes from a sort of a noble family. And I, that, I know that sounds kind of weird, but um, it wasn't necessarily a very prominent family. He was just not a commoner either. He was just kind of eh, from a small town in rural Spain. Well, he decides to try luck. He needs to build some wealth. And he goes to southern Spain to sail with Christopher Columbus on his second voyage. Very exciting, typical Spanish story. A lot of uh, Spaniards just basically, life was at uh, times sort of stagnant. Uh, so they decided to try a lock in the new world. Before all this happens, uh, let me just give you a quick reminder that when Columbus met the Catholic uh, monarchs, Fernand or Fernando, and Queen Isabella, Isabella Cast uh, Castilla, um, he presented that plan about sailing across the world. Uh, the kings or the monarchs agreed on, they just told him, hey, wait a minute, we just got to finish this whole campaign in Granada, southern Spain. You know, we got to conquer it and then we'll talk about it. We mentioned that before a couple of weeks ago. Um, well, Ponce de Leon was part of those, you know, military campaigns. He actually participated in the reconquest or reconquista of Granada. Uh, once the reconquest was done, Columbus comes back with a report of new land. Well, what else we're we gonna do? That sounds pretty appealing for a young guy. So he goes and sets uh, for the new world, brave new world. On uh, September 25th, 1493, Ponce de Leon signs up for the voyage and off he goes. At that time, also, by the way, a lot of people, it was kind of the second trip was kind of a privilege because Columbus's report, first time was kind of a venture. This time it's like a little different. So uh, he gets lucky, essentially, and sells for the new world. And this is where his whole saga starts. In uh, what is nowadays Hispaniola, which is Santo Domingo, that you see the island between Cuba and Puerto Rico. Uh, it was called Hispaniola, 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 Hispaniola. Uh, which is now the uh, Dominican Republic, and the other half is Haiti. Um, that was, at that time, governed by a guy named Nicolas de Ovando. Uh, Nicolas Ovando. You can see him right there. And that's a painting, obviously. And he was, like any um, person in history that becomes relevant, obviously full of... Uh, you know, surprises, good things, and bad things. A sinner like all of us. But he was trying to bring and restore order. He sometimes was a little harsh. Sometimes was very effective. He was bringing order to Hispaniola because there were some rebellious Spanish, Spanish, not Indians, settlers. And then also some indigenous tribes who were rebelling against the crown. Well, Ponce de Leon works for him and rose to the ranks. Not too like, slow, uh, very quickly. And uh, becomes one of his best and most confident men for Ovando. Uh, and that's a very important detail because uh, thanks to him, Ponce de Leon was able to accomplish a lot of things. So uh, as time went by in uh, Ovando, it uh, starts just regaining power and all that. Ponce de Leon hears tales about this whole new territory where there's plenty of gold and riches and all that. And there's this little island. Well, that island that we're talking about now is nowadays Puerto Rico. So after a while, he gets permission from the governor, from Nicholas. Okay. And uh, he set sails for uh, Puerto Rico. Nowadays Puerto Rico. He finds lots of gold and riches. He actually ends up settling down for a while there. Uh, it was in 1508. He was author authorized to explore Puerto Rico. And obviously, he becomes the governor of the island and gets very, very wealthy. It is at that stage where he actually gains his name and reputation among the elites, to put it that way. But, like usual, life is full of surprises, ladies and gentlemen. Um, remember Christopher Columbus? Yeah. Well, by the way, I'm drinking some nice chocolate. Um... Christopher Columbus died, but when uh, Columbus discovered a lot of land originally the first time, the monarchs granted him a lot of titles among those vice royal, you know, which is the highest title outside of being the monarch. 
Uh, when the kings realized, the king and the queen realized the extent of the territory uh, they were granted to Columbus, they were like, wait, I mean, hold on. <laughs> we're not talking about that big chunk of land. We're talking about a nice chunk of real estate, but not that much. Come on. Um, so they get involved in legal battles. And long story short, Christopher Columbus dies, but his sons carry on the legal battles, battles for him. Well, they're still going on while Ponce de Leon is governor of Puerto Rico. And he settles, brings his wife, marries, has like three kids. Life is good. He's planting yucca. He has a farm, essentially. Uh, the typical crunchy life nowadays, right? You're just firm, uh, living off the grid and, and chilling out with your kids and living the life. Well, that's not enough for him, apparently. But we'll find out later. So as the legal battles are going on, he, uh, Colón's, uh, Columbus's sons, in this case, Diego, Diego de Colón, which we have a painting of him right there, wins the case. And may I make a little uh, parenthesis or, you know, little emphasis here. This is a reflection, by the way, of Roman law. Um, I'm reading a really interesting book in Spanish from Dr. Guillermo Pérez Galicia. Um, it's called España, Esencia y Origen, which is Spain, Essence and Origin. And in that book, uh, I'm at the early stages, but it explains how, for the longest time, Spain was the most rebellious province of the Roman Empire. They, they had a hard time conquering it, and it's the one that cost them more bloodshed. But once the Romans conquered Spain, it was the province that embraced Roman culture and law more than anybody else till that day. The saying goes as uh, Spain or the Spanish descendants are uh, the children of Rome, the grandkids of Greece. But anyway, in any case, uh, Spain embraced Roman culture, and this was reflected in Roman law. Before that, a lot of the societies, particularly in the New World, had the law of the jungle, essentially. Might makes right. That includes even the Aztecs and all these more sophisticated indigenous societies. Well, clearly the monarchs were very powerful in Spain, and but still they had to be subjected to uh, the concept of Roman law. Columbus's son, Diego, as you see in the picture, wins that battle finally. And he is restored some of the titles that were stripped from his father. And one of those titles is, okay, you are the Viceroyal of Hispaniola. Which means, Ovando, you're out. You know, the guy who protected Ponce de Leon, who gave him the grants and permission to explore Puerto Rico, where he found his wealth. Here he comes now, Columbus's son, Diego. Diego de Colón, or Diego Columbus. And the first thing he does is clean house. Like, you know, any political uh, changes, usually we see, you know, the old staff's out. Here comes the new staff. It works wonders. Um, so Columbus immediately uh, destitutes or, you know, removes Ponce de Leon from being the governor of Puerto Rico because he's the vice of the whole area. He's the top guy. And, re you know, installs his own guy there. And here's an important lesson for all of us that we can draw. Instead of uh, Ponce de Leon be bitter and engage in long political bitter battles, he, you know, he settles, he gets it, whatever, and he looks for what's next rather than just being clinging to keep fighting for something that is you know, pointless at this stage of his life. Well, King Ferdinand, ever suspicious of the Columbus family because everybody had a legal feud and all that, uh, hears about this new land, also just like Puerto Rico, that you know ought to be explored and is full of richness, and it's also uh, one of the legends says is the fountain of youth as well. Um, so King Ferdinand, instead of granting the Columbus's family or clan more rights to explore this new land and expanding his territory or their territory, their footprint, he says, "Okay, I gotta put somebody who is not gonna be." a friend of the Columbus's clan. Well, Ponce de Leon was the guy. So King Ferdinand grants uh, Ponce de Leon's rights, uh, gives him the privilege to go and explore what is now known as Florida. So he arrives there, he gets shipwrecked and all that, and he founds this awesome land, 
full of like it was during Easter time. And actually, that's the, the whole point we call Florida because he named the place uh, Florida, which means uh, in Spanish is Pascua Florida. That's how they call it Easter season. In other words, it's the festival of flowers or the Easter flower, if you want to put it that way. Uh, but in 1513, you know, he was deposed in 1508 and 1513. He, I'm sorry, he is deposed in 1511, two years later, 1513. Ponce de Leon discovers Florida and he baptized, you know, that place or, you know, calls that land, that land Florida. So, um, theoretically, he's the original Florida man, <laughs> but uh, uh the, that's that's the origin of Florida and that's what we call it. And obviously, it's a place, it's a tropical jungle, and all that kind of stuff, beautiful state. Um, and he becomes actually the first Westerner. First European, obviously, that sets foot in that land that will later become the southern part of the United States, which is Florida. And uh, the rest is history. They discover a lot of things. Unfortunately, he dies in a battle with uh, some local tribes, Indians, um, and they shoot an arrow that had actually poison tip and it gets hit on the leg and he died. Uh, but so you will say, well, what can, lesson can we draw from Ponce de Leon's voyage and journey? Well, there's many. The first one is. What happens when you hold into bitter and grudges? Obviously, you could miss big opportunities. The other thing is, ironically, Diego Colón may have won in the short term. Diego Columbus uh, may have, might have won in the short term. But in the longer term, when it comes to legacy, uh, we most people remember Ponce de Leon actually way easier than Diego Columbus, to be honest. Uh, and, and Diego Columbus's name is always overshadowed by his own father. So, sure, you know, Diego Columbus became the vice royal, but it's in comparison to Ponce de Leon's uh, legacy, it's all, I don't want to say irrelevant because it is not, but it's, it, it kind of dwarfs in comparison. That's what I'm trying to say. So, um, you never know what God has in store for you. Sometimes, you know, some opportunities are taken away from you unjustly, absolutely, but that may not be the end of the story. Maybe there's something else for you waiting. You just got to be faithful and patient and be kind. And trying to live the gospel the best way you can. For all of you who are joining the chat, thank you very much. Uh, this is a short story of Juan Ponce de Leon, the founder of Florida, the original Florida man. For everybody who wants to check that out, the story. Here's an interesting fact. You wonder well, what's going on because he also he's also the founder of San Juan of Puerto Rico, you know, the capital. Well, speaking of, and as I Take a little sip of my chocolate. Speaking of San Juan, Puerto Rico, guess what? Um, King Felipe, Rey Felipe, the uh, actual right now, the current monarch. And I know if there are any Carlists out there, bear with me. I know some of y'all don't recognize him as the king. That's a different story. That's a whole new deal for a different topic. Very complex, not for this occasion. Um, well, King Philip is visiting San Juan, Puerto Rico. He's staying for three days. Unfortunately, let me see if I have the image right here. Um, the statue of Juan Ponce de Leon was toppled, you know, uh, head of the king's visit to Puerto Rico. And I'm actually going to read, I'm, I'm going to quote, just to make sure, you know, there's no misinformation. I got it right here. Okay. Local, quote, local police discovered the dismantled statue located in San Juan's Plaza, San Jose, in the early morning of January 24th. In other words, yesterday, just before the Spanish sovereign was scheduled to meet with Puerto Rico's governor to mark the 500th anniversary of the city's founding, according to a report by the AP. A group known as the Borican Libertarian Forces, which has expressed opposition to Felipe's uh, visit or the king's visit to his country's former colony. Here's the first mistake. They were never a colony. But anyway, we, we clarified that the other day. Claim responsibility for the damage, according to local media reports confirmed by The Guardian. Quote, faced with the visit of the king of Spain, Felipe, to Puerto Rico, and the escalation of the, what they call, and I'm quoting, re-quoting here, Gringo invaders taking over our lands. The group wrote in a statement, quote, we want to send a clear message. Neither kings nor gringo invaders, referring to the recent real estate speculation to the island. 
Um, so anyway, end of quote. There we go. So that's exactly what's what's going on. It, it's obviously laughable, ridiculous. This guy's trying to defend a legacy that obviously is not there. They don't even have the correct terms. They don't understand. It's like they call it colony when there were there was no colony. And anyway, vandalism is just the same story all across the globe. You know, this whole Marxist idea is spreading. Um, and we just have to unfortunately deal with it at this point. It is what it is. So anyway, that's the latest. Unfortunately, uh, they try to spread it. Just like last year, they were trying to topple St. Junipero Serra uh, statues along California. Got no idea what the story of St. Junipero. Got no idea about his legacy and contribution. They just wanted to take some sort of monument of some white guy who was there. And he looked, all right, this is the guy. Well, we're going to take, you know, this guy. I don't care. As long as he's white, we're going to bring it down. That's the attitude, unfortunately. Uh, and that's what we got right now going on today. So there you go. That's the story of uh, Juan Ponce de Leon and uh, the legacy that we have. Obviously, it attached all of us in buying us, and there's a lot to learn from him. There's obviously a deeper story, richer story, but now you know the idea. And a lot of Floridians, if I'm not mistaken, know his story or his image quite well. Uh, it's promoted along the state, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if there's any Floridians right there uh, watching the show. That's Juan Ponce de Leon, by the way. I don't know if I put it on screen. Uh, I put Ovando, which you see on screen. And Columbus is on Diego. There we go. That's uh, Ponce de Leon. All righty. Let's go check out some of the comments. Thank you for uh, joining us, by the way, subscribing and all that. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. Um, Bruce City says, hello, ready to learn. Thank you very much. Next, oh man, well, next next uh, show, next Tuesday, God willing, uh, Bruce City, I'm going to talk about the Tercios. I love uh, talking about the Tercios. It's one of my favorite things among other, you know, things in Spain. Um, because January 31st, is historically where we uh, remember the legacy of the Terzo, this special elite force that dominated Europe for so long, almost three centuries. Um, and um, there's a lot to learn from them. And so the Tercios, among other traditions, also we're in the 20th. What's when is the February 2nd? Let me check my calendar very quickly. Mm -hmm -hmm. Groundhog Day, which is next Wednesday, is also Candle Mass. Or Dia de la Candelaria, as we say in Spanish. So all of y'all who got the little baby figurine during the Rosca, which we talked last week about, that's when you got to throw the tamale party, uh, <laughs> historically. That's when a lot of you people are also going to take down your Christmas tree. Disclaimer, I haven't taken mine down, but it's not because I'm following the old calendar. It's just I've forgotten. I'm so busy right now that <laughs> completely neglected that Christmas tree. Uh, it's synthetic and it's little. Sorry, I just don't have the time to take care of a real tree. I love him to death. I'm not allergic to them, but it's just uh, what what can you do when you're a single dad? So it is what it is. Um, but anyway, check it out. Don't miss it. Um, let's see. Samuel Hardy. Greetings. Hi, how you doing, my brother? I'm always excited to learn. Thank you for being here. It says he likely will talk about the several Irishmen. Oh, you're talking about tomorrow in Reconquista. Tomorrow, tomorrow, not tomorrow, tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central Time in Spanish. Uh, Cesar Rodriguez is his name. I might have the, the, the I'll put the link. Uh, let me see if I'll find it very quickly. Uh, my YouTube channel should be there. Let me put it here. Let's see, network. I should have it. Let's see. I'm going to add it. Oh, no, not this one. I was, click I was clicking the wrong way. Here we go. All right. It's uploading. Here we go. That's the guy. I'm having him over the show. In Spanish. Uh, so you check it out. He's also a uh, certified, what, what do you call that? Like mixologist, whatever. Like he knows about uh, whiskeys and scotch. He went actually got certified in Ireland or Scotland. I forgot which. I think it's Scotland where he went. Anyway, Cesar Ramirez, he's in charge 
of the Irish community, you know, and festivals down there in Mexico. He lives in the modern, now they in Veracruz. He was in Mexico City. Now he lives in Veracruz. So he's in charge of festivals and parades and oversees things. He's actually a very interesting guy. Uh, if you get the chance, check out, check out his content. And uh, he's going to give us a, a special cocktail to celebrate and commemorate the union between those two uh, peoples okay so like mexico war you say with mexicans being catholic yeah and other things also okay there's a lot of uh interesting factoids that we'll see um yeah my next guest cesar ramirez colin good evening luis and everybody how you doing colin good to see you here my friend uh, christopher columbus gets a bad ride by the leftists yeah I, I anybody at this point that has let done any kind of decent legacy um you know, it's going to get a bad rap. <laughs> so um, I don't get it. Um, honestly, we got a lot to be thankful for, especially with Christopher Columbus. None of us here in the new world will be uh, here. I won't be broadcasting. You know, Timothy won't be also broadcasting. Had it not been for Christopher Columbus, you know, honestly. Um, the guy wasn't saying, well, yeah, neither am I, you know. And uh, I'm pretty sure he was far better than I am as a person, I hope. But um, it is what it is. And um often we just oversee those details we want to make own heroes like they're marvel comic heroes or something i don't know i don't know what people have in mind says i have a great admiration for christopher columbus yeah yeah and he liked that story of ponce de leon thank you very much i'm glad you liked it it's a really really interesting story the original florida man but in this case, he was more sane than the modern infamous Florida man. Florida man stabbed an innocent Wisconsin guy to death on a Greyhound something or a lunatic. Yeah. For those of you who are watching outside of the U.S., Florida man is considered it's a cultural slant or for somebody who does something outrageous or crazy. Uh, sometimes funny, sometimes tragic. Uh, but usually it's just pretty outrageous in any sense of the word. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's the term we use, Florida man. Uh, the radical left is totally godless, absolutely, and they don't know their history. I agree completely. Anthony Rodriguez, Rodriguez, it's hard for me, anglicized Rodriguez, Rodriguez, uh, says hi. What are those? Uh, where's this? I don't know. I can see. Um, yes, in Puerto Rico. There we go. Thank you, my friend. Um, Christine Russo. That's a very interesting last name. I like it. Is it uh, Greek by any chance, Christine, or anything? That's, I like it a lot. We fought the same tyranny uh, in Ireland. Yeah. Luis, have you visited the great site of Father Miguel Pro? No, Chris. I haven't had the privilege, and I haven't gone to Mexico. And the last time I went, it was 2010 to say goodbye to my grandpa because he was about to die. And at that time, obviously, he dies. You know, may, his soul, may, may his soul rest in peace, my grandpa Mario. Um, but no, I haven't had the chance in uh, to visit the graveside. And honestly, uh, in my youth, unfortunately, Chris, I uh, grew up fairly ignorant of my own uh, Catholic heritage. You know, not just catechism, uh, but actually Catholic heritage, Mexico, what, you know, um, in, in the school system, when I was a kid, they suppressed a lot of that information, um, you know, through a more um, secular story and obviously twisted and often false, you know, and they overlook the Cristero topic. Topic. It's actually almost till now. It was for the longest time, even when I was a kid, a taboo, uh, culturally speaking, uh, was like not necessarily a very encouraged to talk about and discuss. It is until recent times, through the legacy of former Colonel um, um, Salvador uh, Iñiguez, uh, which I send a um, shout out to them in Guadalajara, who is actually defending the legacy of the Cristeros and other people, like Miguel Salinas and all those people, um, they're actually protecting the legacy and the sacrifice that the Cristeros did for, for Mexico and the society in general. It was one of the first major crusades against the church in the modern era also but i hope i can go there's a lot of lessons uh when you're younger man i wish i knew a lot of things that i know now like anybody has the same regrets i don't know if i mentioned this story or not but when i was younger i went to the town of parras coahuila which is paras or parras it's in the northern central part of mexico and it's a very interesting place because 
it's a place where the grapes and all that grew naturally, the vines. So when the explorers left from Zacatecas, you know, the mining state, the exploring north, they found this little oasis literally in the middle of the northern Mexican desert. And it was awesome because you have plenty of sunshine. We have nicer weather because it's kind of on a hill. Uh, it's ideal to grow uh, grapes. Well, they established a winery there. And it's the oldest winery in the whole continent, not just in Mexico. So it's literally over 400 years old. Um, and it's been bought over different families and all that. But it's still running. It's the oldest running winery in the whole continent. It's called Casa Madero. Obviously, they're not paying me or anything. I'm a sponsor. Well, when I was young in my college years, like anybody uh, could imagine, I was necessarily thinking about transcendental things. So we had a spring break and we went to Parras, which is about three hours away from my hometown in Monterey, Mexico, going west. And at that time, for such a uh, earthly worldview that I had at that time, I had a blast. It was just a bunch of friends drinking, partying, all that. Um, little did I know that I was so close to stopping and visiting a place that had so much historical value and richness and culture. I was so close and I never made it in. Uh, and I regret and I, you know, I hit my head on the wall because later when I learned the history of Casa Madero and I mean, Parras Coahuila and all that, uh, when I learned about that at what, that point in my life, I didn't have enough money at that point. We were going through a rough patch financially. So I couldn't go to Mexico and check it out because I didn't have the funds to go. And then later when I had the funds to go, we were in the middle of a drug war. So Mexico was not safe at that time to travel and long. The highways, especially if you were not familiar, like it was in my case, you know, because I've been away from Mexico for so long. So I couldn't get to, you know, explore it. And now we have, you know, COVID and all these things going on and just have more responsibilities. I'm getting older and all that. So I don't know if at this point I will ever go visit that winery and uh, kind of redeem what I couldn't do when I was in my early uh, 20s uh, or when I'm in college days, actually. So anyway, that's one of the stories. So I wish I knew those things. Well, the same thing I feel about the Cristeros. I wish I knew uh, the things as a kid that I know now. And I would have probably cared more about visiting those places than going partying clubs in Cancun or whatever. Whatever it is. Germanicus Caesar 117. Interesting nickname. Let's see. I have a feeling about this coming. Sometimes can't help but feel that the so-called anti-colonialists basically conflate the Anglo experience with the Indians with the Spanish experience. That's a very good point. What should be Anglo guilt became white guilt. That's true. Uh, interesting comment, by the way. And, and I, uh, I agree to a certain extent uh, because we assume that whatever some of the Anglos did, and some, not even all, to be honest, did, it applies to any guy who came from Europe. Like anything else, history is complex, and they're uh, human beings, right? Sometimes there are bad people involved, sometimes flawed people, sometimes some good people here. It's, but it's not as simple as people think or uh, as easy as they want to you know, apply it. Yeah, uh, thank you. Viva Cristo Rey, long live Christ the King. Pablo, thanks for the teachings tonight. Thank you very much. I didn't know anything about this explorer, but I know. But now I know something. Thank you. I'm glad I can help you. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, what I have here, Meaning of Catholic Luz Channels. Thank you very much, the Reconquista Network. Thanks for the link, Anthony. Uh, yeah, you can type it like that, Reconquista Network. Uh, happy Leaf Erickson Day. I didn't know that. Oh, happy Leaf Erickson Day, actually. All right. Actually, I heard there was a cause for Columbus's canonization. Yes, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know how true that is. There is a cause. I don't know how far it has been. I don't even know if he's venerable or not. I got to check that out with uh, some of my Spanish contacts. Um, a lot of the Columbus information, Germanicus, gets a little bit convoluted, as you would expect. Um, it is what it is. Some records even might indicate, and I take this with a huge grain of salt, might indicate that he was not from Italy or what is now Italy, um, that he might have been from Aragon and particularly from Barcelona or Catalonia. But I take it with a huge grain of salt. Actually, I'm not a historian, but I will highly doubt that account because often what we see with this whole Catalonian supposedly independence movement, they try to claim 
uh, lay claim and things that they're not theirs, you know, just to validate themselves in some way or somehow to succeed from Spain. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, either way, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. I mean, wherever he was from, it's his legacy. And he was a deep man of faith. Uh, he was convicted. His writings, you know, reveal that faith conviction on him. Uh, he was not perfect. Okay. And there's a lot that we can learn from him. Keep in mind, this guy's like, you know, face death and adventure. Like, honestly, uh, imagine sailing to an unknown land. It's easy for us to, from our armchair, you know, position to criticize and all that because our world has been mapped. It's not the same for him. And to re and, and honestly, the only way you can accomplish those, you know, great sagas and adventures, it is because you have something to cling on, and that's the gospel. You know, um, this, this, I have no other explanation. For me, riches it doesn't make any sense. Cheers with the reptilian tea. It's chocolate, my friend. Chocolate, cacao. And it's the real deal, by the way. Um, I get cocoa powder or cacao powder, I'm sorry, and mix it with uh, some milk, put it in the blender, and some maple syrup. Because, as you know, co uh, cacao powder is bitter. So uh, there we go. The Minnesota Catholic go to represent Jeremiah's paleocrat Crack Wolf Pack Channel. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, check it out. Telegram. It's a wonderful, wonderful chat. They also have prayer warriors and all that kind of stuff. Um, it, it is super neat. Check it out. Now it's Haley. I marry an Irishman. Oh, nice. Irishman. My, here's a little um, anecdote or story very quickly. Um, my obviously late wife, rest in peace, uh, Christy. I met her because some Irishman in Mexico. Uh, so years back when I was in college, I, I was at a bar and I met these Irish people. And obviously we had a great time. We we're drinking and all that. Uh, and we became great friends and I became their bar guy. You know, I've been always, I, I don't know why, but I've always been kind of like, I'm not an outgoing person, but I like to be out, right? Like uh, there's a difference. So I knew all the bars and the people. So I knew, you know, I could tell, hey, you can go check this bar. It's safe. This is not, or this is, you know, whatever. So throughout the years, we became great friends. And they were teaching English in, in Mexico momentarily. Well, their time was up. They had to go back to, Mex uh, to Ireland. And they brought somebody to cover for that summer while they find more teachers in a permanent you know, basis. Well, that person that replaced him momentarily was Christy. And they introduced me to her and said, hey, Luis, this is Christy. You know, just like you show the whole lay of the ground in the city, would you mind watching, watching over Christy? Because she's by herself and showing her town. I know you're a decent man and uh, safe. And she's going to be safe with you. Yeah. So one long story short is that's how my wife and I originally met in Mexico, hanging out. And uh, the rest is history. You know, so uh, all because of Irish people. So that's why Irish people have always a special place in my heart. When will I see you again with just the mustache? <laughs> I don't know, because uh, for those of you who don't know now, I'm blessed to have a girlfriend in, uh, and I have my daughters. So my girlfriend obviously likes the stash. My daughters hated it. I shaved my beard and I left the stash. I liked it, uh, but my girls were definitely not happy. And they sure reminded me, you know, like 10 days after the fact that they were not happy about it. So I don't know if I can endure that again, honestly, um, having two girls getting on to me for not um, um, for shaving my beard. They hate the fact that I they hated the fact that I shaved my beard. So there we go. Ah, there we go. My in-laws are actually from York, England. Nice. Time flies, Luis. I left Ireland in 1986. Finally, the year 2000. Wow. Paul Lucero, good stuff, Luis. Would love to hear uh, your early perspectives on the Philippines and their relationship with New Spain, like the story of the devotion of Señora La Paz Buen Viaje. Yes, I got to do a special show of Philippines or Filipinas, named after King Philip, by the way. Uh, and believe it or not, the Philippines have a special connect connection with Acapulco, Mexico, and the Mexican culture. So, in fact, for those who are from Mexico, the China Poblana has its origins on the Philippines also. Anyway, real men drink better chocolate. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is the let's blame it of my, uh, uh, I'm becoming gringo, Americanization, whatever you want to call it, simulation. Uh, 
also, I love spicy things like in a Mexican, but I also love sweet things and I love maple. Absolutely. It's my favorite. In fact, it's like I can't get enough of that stuff. I had the privilege to go to uh, Montreal a couple of years ago. And there's uh, at that time, like near downtown Montreal, a store all about maple. Oh, my goodness. I care less about Disneyland or Disney World, whatever they are. I don't even know the difference. I've never been there. Never care about going there in my life. But that place was the equivalent of Disneyland to me. I mean, it was just incredible. Incredible. I was like, I did not want to leave. Uh, so ever since, uh, bought some maple tea, maple syrup. I have maple syrup all the time. That's the only reason why I have a membership at Costco, because I can buy maple at a cheaper price, essentially. So, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I can't do the bitter chocolate. Uh, I have to have maple. Imagine crossing the sea back in those days and uh, wooden ships. Yeah, wooden ships on top of that. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, yeah. Praise be to God. Absolutely. Laudetur Jesus Christus. I do it. Watching from the Philippines. Another Philippine. Bro. Awesome. Thanks for watching, Teach God TV. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to have people from the Philippines here. It's, uh, our forgotten brethren, I mean, sadly from us, you know, we, we got to do better. I always say it in my channel. We got to do better reaching out to our friends in the Philippines. They're our brothers, not even our cousins. So, um, yeah. Maple bacon fudge is the most amazing thing I've ever experienced. Oh my goodness, brother. That sounds so good. So good. I had chocolate bacon when I lived in Austin and it was delicious. I cannot imagine if you got maple to the mix. <sighs> when we travel, how we change. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's part of the reason, you know, about travel and um you learn. Um, I still love traveling. I mean, I'm an outdoor guy and I like, you know, wineries and country fields, that kind of stuff. I know that sounds kind of crunchy. I am uh, honestly not careless about big sporting venues and concerts and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I like more historical places, camping, stargazing, bird watching, you know, state parks kind of stuff. Everybody's different. So, yeah, uh, especially the older I get. I like waffles with maple syrup. I love I actually make uh, waffles from scratch. Um, it's a very simple recipe. It's kind of like uh, I also make crepes, and um, I love my waffles with bacon. With bacon, well, with bacon too, but with wa uh, maple. Sorry, maple. I'm thinking about bacon. <laughs> you know what else I make, and I don't want to give you cravings and all that, but. I also get cream cheese, which I don't know why it's hard to get right now in Texas, or at least in Fort Worth. And I stir it up with a li little pinch of salt, but then I put maple syrup, like the real maple. I'm not talking about like the uh, the stuff that you find in store. That's oh, I want to get in legal trouble. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the real maple syrup. And I stir it, and mix it, uh, and I make sort of like cream cheese icing maple flavor. And I put on top of that waffle. And then I put more maple on top of it. Oh, uh, here we go, diabetes. Diabetes. Um, it's absolutely delicious. I don't recommend it every day because you're gonna gain weight. So uh, do it like kind of like a Saturday breakfast better instead. Viva Filipinas! Long leg the Philippines. Philippines, I love them. Death. Viva Madre España, Viva Iglesia Católica. Long leg the motherland Spain. Long live the Catholic Church. Nieves says, uh, Juan Ponce Leon was literally the godfather of the main indigenous cacique's mother, a cacique with whom he had a cordial relationship and even exchanged names. Yeah, I mean, yes, absolutely. Before Filipinas is 90% Catholic, now it's 80% and maybe 35% of practicing Catholic so sad. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a shame. And it's honestly, sadly, spreading that trend across the world. It's not endemic of the Philippines. It's just, for whatever reason, in the Western world, the, the, that's the legacy. I don't know. Uh, it breaks my heart. At the same time, it's an encouragement to keep praying, keep working, and not uh, just desist and like keep, keep pushing, right? We're the people of hope. I always say that. We're the people of hope. Uh, we cannot relent. We cannot give in, okay? We always have that hope, and God will take care of it. Uh, Filipinos also have banana leaf tamales, like southern Mexico, and paella arroz valenciana. For those of you who don't know what tamales in Mexico, you have different kinds of tamales with leaf. 
uh, the corn husk part, you know, like the leaf, is how you usually, we know here in America, the tamales. But there are also banana leaves, which are bigger, uh, especially from Oaxaca, so the Mexico. I don't know, the Philippines had a similar thing. Being a Catholic, Ponce de Leon is an ancestor of mine. Actually, really, Anthony? Oh, that's a discussion for another time. Yes, I would love to hear that story. Wow, what an honor, brother. What an honor. All right, without realizing we're uh, nearing the end, I was supposed to do just a quick 30-minute intervention, but obviously we pushed past that 30-minute mark. Uh, but as usual, I had a blast. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, last uh, comments. Take care, everyone. Have a run. God bless you. Thank you, my friend, Anthony. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Check out Meaning of Catholic on Telegram and Patreon. Please support us, but particularly, please keep Meaning of Catholic in your prayers, your rosaries. You know, that matters more than anything else. So really appreciate it. Um, and I hope you like it. We'll see you next week. Um, it says one of my university students to subscribe to your channel. I will ask them to learn from true history because here in our country, we have a bad history. Yeah. Anytime, my brother. Uh, until next week, keep us in your prayers. And remember, the most important thing I always say, whether it's in English or Spanish, que viva, que viva Cristo Rey. <laughs>